Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura, and today I want to talk to you about an easy fall gardening task, which is to evaluate your garden right now by taking videos and pictures, and then you can worry about what you need to do over the winter time. So many times what we do is we plan during the winter, but it's hard to necessarily remember what everything looked like at the end of the summer. So now is the perfect time to take pictures, make some videos, and write down some notes. So to give you a good example of how to do this, I'm gonna take you on a little walk through this bed, which is one of the beds in my front yard. And I can show you what worked, what didn't, what I liked, what I wish worked better, what I might move. So let's get started. So to give you a sense where this bed is, that's most of my front yard garden beds over there. And then the driveway. And then this bed, which is on the other side of the driveway. So this is what you see directly from the street. And what I want to start with first are the red twig dogwoods and the yellow twig dogwoods. So they're on this side of the bed, forming a nice border between our property and the next property over. And what I want to show you, so I go around this way, is this is what it looks like on this side. So what I try to do during the season is keep everything somewhat contained. You know, I don't let things flop over too much. But as you can see, I've let them get pretty high this season. And you also can see some of the red twigs and then some of the yellow twigs. And not surprisingly, the red twigs are getting some red leaves and the yellow twigs are gonna get some beautiful yellowish leaves that almost glow when the light hits them. You're also gonna see what looks like some dead branches. And that does happen on red twig dogwood and yellow twig dogwood. And that's some of what I'm gonna cut out more in the, I'd say late fall. So usually November, sometimes into December I'll do that. Once all the leaves have fallen, it's a lot easier to see which stems are still bright colored and which stems are getting a little bit of the dark like this. And I'm gonna put a video up on the screen right now and I'll link to it below in the description area to show you exactly how I do this. I remove the dead stems just in advance of winter time and then I enjoy the best stem color all winter into spring because I'm just left with all the bright colored yellow twigs and red twigs. So here's the river birch. Now I'm in the bed. And here you can see what the red and yellow twig dogwoods look like on this side. And down here, you can see a lot of the yellow twig dogwood. And then you go up here, you see some of the red leaves of the red twig. So they're interspersed, red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, all the way up. So another thing, if you look real close, is besides seeing some dead leaves here or there, which indicate some dead stems, if you go inside, you're going to maybe see a few surprises, like these beautiful flowers. <laughs> yes, it's early October. And then the flowers will always result in berries. And look how beautiful the berries are on this yellow twig dogwood. Nice and white. The birds absolutely love these berries. And I've got some down here as well. Just beautiful. Always nice to look really closely at your garden too, because you know what, while you're evaluating, you may see some beautiful surprises. Now in here, you'll also see what almost looks like a canopy forming. You've got some curved red twig dogwood branches going way in here, and I will trim those back. And you also, let me step back so I can show you the river birch tree. So here's the river birch tree. You can see the moon way in the distance. I don't know if you can see that up there in the sky. So pretty. But this river birch tree really needs to be trimmed back a little bit. And what I mean by that is it's hanging over and giving this bed a lot more shade than I had intended. 
So what you can do, and what I plan on doing, is limbing this tree up. And so I want the leaf canopy to start a lot higher in this bed, and that's gonna provide more sun, which I think a lot of these plants need. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here is the Muscogee crepe myrtle in our center bed. And I'm showing you this because we limbed up this tree last fall. You see how you can see a lot more of the trunk stems. And that's because we limbed it up last fall. And limbing it up isn't the same as pruning. So you can do this in the fall without any worry that you're harming the plant. And by limbing it up, it provides more sun to the plants. And that's what I wanted. They were getting a little bit too much shade, especially the roses. And what happens is now they get morning sun into around lunchtime and then they're in the afternoon shade. It's some dappled sun and then some afternoon shade. And that's really good because that really helps keep them cool during the hottest parts of the day. So that's what limbing up means and that's what it looks like. So you see how nice that is. And that's what I wanna do with the river birch trees actually in both beds on each side of this center bed. And just a quick mention, you see a lot of yellow leaves on the river birch. We had almost two straight weeks of rain. It was on and off, but we had Ophelia remnants and we had another tropical storm. And when the water basically waterlogs the soil that much from all the rain, it can't produce oxygen in the soil. It depletes all the nutrients and, and you know, it's what causes all the yellowing of the leaves. So after you get a good storm, if you notice that you've got a lot of yellow on your shrubs or your trees, even though river birch loves water, there's a limit. And of course, as any river birch owner knows, you're gonna get sticks and twigs that fall all over the garden. And in this case, the driveway. It is what it is. <laughs> you just learn to live with it. So in front of the river birch, we planted a dwarf Hinoki cypress. And these are just such beautiful plants. The leaves are pretty soft, but just the way it grows, it's just very sculptural. It's just very beautiful, very pretty. Of course, it has a little leaf in here. We'll throw that down. And here's what it looks like from the front. It's just such a great shrub, and it's so pretty with its beautiful bright green color. Now, occasionally, you will get some brown, and in this case, you can just pull that off and dispose of it. Or you can drop it on the ground and just let it decompose and go back into the soil. And that's what I mean by easy care. Now, if you have some browning on the inside of your evergreens at this time of year, I have a whole video on that. I'll link it above and I'll link it below in the description area so you can learn exactly what it is and how not to panic and how easily you can remove it. So in front of the Hinoki Cypress, I have three blue star junipers that are just looking sad. Let's take a close look at how sad they look. You might have been saying, where's the third one? Well, the third one is right here and it's almost covered by the red twig and yellow twig dogwood. And let me get in here so you can see what happens. These need sun. They're not getting sun, they're gonna brown. Now these are notoriously slow growing shrubs. They are dwarf shrubs. So they are a really nice low architectural accent and a nice evergreen in your garden. But if they're not getting as much sun as they need, they're not gonna grow well. This one looks the best right now, but it shouldn't have all these gaps. And the reason, now they will get gaps over time. So I don't mean they shouldn't have any gaps, but see a lot of these gaps are because the needles just came off. Now needle dieback does happen, but trust me, it shouldn't be happening like this. And this one gets the most sun, but you can see there are still a lot of dying needles on it and it just does not look good. I mean, let me show you from the front of the bed. So here's what they look like from the front of the bed. and It's really not that great. So what's gonna happen is these blue star junipers are going to be moved. I'm moving them into the backyard into a drought tolerant bed that I'm making. They won't get as much moisture as they're getting here, which I think will also help them, and they'll be in more full sun. So that's what's gonna happen with these guys. They don't necessarily take to transplanting that well, so I am crossing my fingers this works, but I do wanna save these because they're beautiful shrubs.
But what's helpful is taking video now with the shrubs here reminds me how bad they look. <laughs> but it's also going to be a nice before and after because I'll take video again once I remove them. And then I'll see just exactly how much space I have to plant something else. And that is what I mean by something for the winter time. I'm not gonna worry about that now. I'll worry about that in the winter time when I have lots of fun with all the plant catalogs and websites, trying to plan something fun. So in front of the blue star junipers are my Veronicas. And you have the blue Veronica there in the back, the one that looks fullest, that is the blue Veronica, which I'll put the name on the screen. And then these three that are kind of in front of it, those are first love Veronica, and those are pink and they don't look great at all. I cut them back already because they were just so bad. And you can see how this one looks and that one. So here's what I think happened, two things. One, I think they got baked because we did have a really hard summer, but I also think they didn't get as much sun as they needed. They just, something just didn't work right with them. Last year, they did much better. Now the blue one did great, but my first loves didn't do so great. And they actually were the better ones last season. So I'm not giving up on them because as I've told you in quite a few videos, perennials need about three years until they reach their prime. The first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. So next year should be the leap year. And I'm sure things will be fine. But as you can see, what I did was I cut them back, but you see how much I left. I always leave a little bit to cover the crown. And as leaves start to gather in them, like you kind of see over here, you see some leaves gathering in them already, that actually protects the crown during the winter time. In front of the Veronica, I have Lantana. Unfortunately, it's annual for me. Now there are a couple perennial varieties I could try and I haven't yet, but I may next year. I think I might have said that last year. <laughs> but there's a yellow variety that is more of a spreader. And then there's an upright variety, which a lot of people say can be a little bit crazy. But these are annuals and they've done really well for me. I just wish they would start really filling out sooner. Look how beautiful they are. I think if I do anything in this section, it would be to plant more annuals next year. Last year I ripped out all the cat's pajamas cat mint that was here that was beautiful but then didn't look so great. The lantana seemed to survive everything. They survived the brutal summer just fantastically. So I will definitely put more of them in next year. This is another one and as you can see, I don't want to interrupt the bee but the bee is definitely enjoying this morning's breakfast. Now this little corner I've shown you in previous videos and tours. So I have what's left of the Millennium Alliums, which I love. And I will keep the seed heads on. I think for fall and winter interest, it's just beautiful. And I love the juxtaposition between the dried flowers of the Millennium Alliums, the still blooming strong Lantana, and the just starting to get pink little lime hydrangeas. It's very pretty. Now this year, I added this Agastache, or Agastache, or Agastache, whichever way you want to say it. This is Rosy Posy, and this was recommended to me by a few gardeners, and I love this plant. This was perfect for this corner, because you see this corner, it doesn't get that wet. Even though I've got sprinklers in this bed, this stays really dry, so this is a perfect spot for something that can handle more drought. And I just stepped back for a second to remind you that your garden isn't all one type of soil in terms of moist or dry, unless it's a small garden bed. This is a huge bed, and we do have sprinklers in it. But for example, there in the corner, it's dry. And then you go up to the middle, well, the river birch really, really loves moisture. And then you have the red and yellow twig dogwood, which loves moisture, and there's sprinklers all up the side there. So it definitely varies. And it does take a while to get to know your garden. So if you get a little stumped at times, don't worry, it takes a while. I've had this particular garden bed, I've been working on it since 2014, and I'm still working on it. <laughs> so it's not that it gets necessarily, well, it does get a little easier, 
but it takes time. And that's what gardening is all about, is taking time. Enjoying what you're doing, so don't get frustrated. Hi, Mr. B. Hello. This is also why I'm not an advocate for ripping out your summer bloomers, because the bees are still looking for a lot of wonderful pollen and nectar. All right, so now we come to the little lime hydrangeas. And interspersed with, there's three little lime hydrangeas, interspersed with them are Japanese hellerai, which is a type of holly. Now this one looks like it's a little open here. And that's because I tripped over this rock and it was not pretty. In fact, we, <laughs> we did see it on security cameras, but the video wasn't clear enough for me to put here. Otherwise it, it sort of would have made good video. I'm not sure. But I tripped over this and my head unfortunately landed right there on the paver edging. I'm okay, but I tried to use this poor hydrangea to break my fall, which was really dumb. <laughs> so I broke part of that off. But these are in their second full season. They're completing their second full season and they're doing well. You know, they're a little bit more spindly than I wanted. They're not as full, but you can see there is new growth still coming on them. It was a brutal summer and this corner one especially got really, really hot. So in this case, maybe having the branches hanging over was a help from the river birch, not quite sure. The one thing with the river birch that also drives me nuts are all the leaves that fall. Now these, it's not fall leaf time. I mean, it's early October, but all of these, they are from all the previous droughts we've had. And then we had too much rain. Like we just had so much rain the past two weeks that a lot of leaves are yellow now. And that's because the soil was just waterlogged. So these hydrangeas are looking great. Are they as bushy as the little limes that I have on the other side of my front yard? The ones that have been growing since 2014? No, because these were just planted a few years ago. So I'm patient and I think these look nice. Now, you see this rose? Yeah. So <laughs> let me talk about this rose. Once upon a time, I had knockout roses in this bed and they were beautiful until they weren't and they were so ugly and I got so sick of dealing with the black spot that I had my husband help me rip them out which meant he ripped them out thank you very much and then we planted these little lime hydrangeas in their place well lo and behold look what has shown up I guess we didn't get all of the roots <laughs> and so we've got a knockout rose bush I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Part of me wants to keep it because if it wants to grow here, maybe that's fine. So we'll see, but I'm not moving it. I just think it's pretty. One of the things I want to do, which I was going to talk about, and let me go on the other side just to show you. Now I'm on the other side. You can see the rose back there. But one of the things that I really want to do with this bed is I want to give it even more color. You saw when I just showed you the pictures of how the knockout roses looked in this bed. Well, my goodness, it was vibrant, beautiful. I need a little bit more color on this side. I don't need it, I want it. And that's, again, let me clarify. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to buy certain plants. You don't need to have the latest petunia. If you want them in your garden bed, that's a want, not a need, right? Okay, <laughs> just so we know, I don't want anyone to ever feel like, oh, I need to get that. No, you get it because you want it and you're gonna enjoy it and love it. That's why we shop. Okay, this is my pride and joy. I love geranium roseanne. And I know quite a few of you have seen my video on geranium roseanne, which I will also link above and below. And here's another new plant that I added this season. And this is called Midnight Velvet Sedum. This is a new plant from Walters Gardens and Proven Winners. And they sent this one to me this year to trial in my garden. And so far it doesn't look like much, but that's because it's brand new. Came in a little pot, but it has beautiful, burgundy foliage and you can see the flowers are almost like rosy and then they darken a little bit as time goes on. Just beautiful. It's a low grower so it's not going to get much taller than this what you see here. And 
and it has a nice spread once it matures. And so it's going to fill in this area nicely, and this area also has daffodils planted, so it's going to be a nice combination. This will cover the bare ground that you see here. And even though there's a sprinkler right here, this is a sprinkler that juts up high. It goes actually above the helleri, and it hits more of the little lime hydrangeas and the shrubs behind it. So this area stays dry except for rainfall, and that's why it's the perfect spot for rosy posy as well as midnight velvet. Now just to give you another perspective, this is the knockout rose that you see with the little lime hydrangea, and then back here is a Kramer's Red Winter Heath. I used to have two or three of them here. This is the only one that survived. And every year that I thought I'd pull it out, I never did. And now it's actually starting to settle in finally. So that'll be some nice winter color, not only because of the evergreen color, but because it blooms all winter long with beautiful fuchsia magenta blooms. It's just looking so beautiful in the fall. Now this is perennial ageratum, and I am just in love with this plant. This all started from three little plants that I had originally planted in front of the little Henry sweet spire you see right here. But it seeds around, and if you don't like it seeding around, then be forewarned. And as you see all these seedlings, originally I was upset by it. I just thought, what did I do? And then I realized, no, this is gonna seed around, but it's gonna thrive where it wants to thrive. And this autumn color of this periwinkle blue, sometimes it almost looks purple. Well, my goodness, that competes with color that you'd get from asters or mums. And rabbits don't like this, so win-win for me. But it's just beautiful. So it decided to make a home in this corner this year, and I love it. So I feel like with these little lime hydrangeas, I've lucked out because in the summertime, you see this geranium roseanne will make friends with the little lime hydrangea and you get both the roseanne blooms with the hydrangea. And now in the fall, I have this beautiful combo. So I absolutely love it. Really pretty. So that stays. <laughs> but we go over here now and we've got the Little Henry Sweet Spires. There's two of them here, and they love this spot. Now, I've shown you the ones both in, the, in this yard as well as in the backyard. And the backyard ones, because they're in full sun, they sort of maintain their shorter shape. But these guys get more moisture. They get some shade. They are thriving here. And you can see, judging by these new shoots that are coming up right out of the ground, I mean, that's a new stem. So I could do one of two things. I could just cut that back. I could let it grow. Well, that's two things already. Or the third one is I could dig it up and plant it elsewhere. So that's a nice problem to have actually. And you can see the color is just starting to change. It is just stunning. Absolutely beautiful. And here is where I had the original two or three plants that I planted. And my goodness, you know, it ends up looking a little bit messy. Like I said, the first couple years it bothered me and now I'm sort of embracing it. I'm realizing that, you know, you struggle to get certain plants to grow. It's like, I want this one to grow. I'm struggling with it. It's bothering me. Darn it, why won't you grow? And then you have other plants that are saying, hey, I can grow here. I'm pretty, I'll do well. So I'm learning to embrace that more. So it may not be what I wanted, I may have wanted it to look a little bit neater, but it sure is pretty. Now, if you didn't want it to seed around as much, once it starts to dry, you could cut all these heads off and toss them. Not in the garden, because then they'll seed around, but just toss them somewhere in the garbage. And you see as well, right here at the edge, there's a lot more plants. This is what I mean, is it's putting out all kinds of additional roots and suckers and new plants because it's so happy. Whereas my little Henry sweet spire in the backyard isn't doing any of that. It's in full sun. It gets just as much moisture, but it's in full sun. So I think the full sun keeps it in check a little bit more. 
So just something good to know if you're growing this plant or want to grow this plant. Really pretty. So in terms of what I would do, any notes I would make here? Not really. I think uh, I showed you already in the backyard in one of my previous garden shore videos how I cut these off in the back. And I may come out and do that in the front. Now that it's cooler out, it's probably going to be a nice chore just to use as an excuse to get outside. But there's really nothing I would do except I don't think I will pinch these back as much as I did. And by pinch, I meant just try to pull a lot of them out. I think I will learn to embrace it even better. And here you can see the red twig dogwood on the end. So now I'm at the other end of the bed. And now I want to step into the bed and talk about the Mugo Pine. <laughs> I can't even fit all of this in one screen. Look how big. This is such a mammoth shrub and I love it. In the winter time, is, it's time to shine. When all these other shrubs lose their leaves, this looks absolutely beautiful, whether there's snow or not. It also collects quite a bit of leaves underneath it. And I don't go too nuts about it because the leaves end up providing more nutrients to the soil as they decompose. But yeah, periodically I come in here and get the leaves off. As you see right here, what I was talking about, you've got another river birch stem. You know, those happen. But this is a beautiful shrub. Now I may, <laughs> I think I said this last year, I may cut this back. But every time I say I'm going to do it, I don't do it. But some of these, you know, are growing almost like a, a tree now. I mean, you see this. So I could cut this back. I wouldn't do that until the springtime. Help it, encourage it to grow. A lot of times in the spring, they'll develop candles right here on the edges. And that's what you can snip off to prevent any future growth from each branch. But you can also just trim it back if you want to as well. So it is one magnificent shrub. So overall, I know that I'm going to move a few shrubs. I know that I want to add a few things. I know that I want to limb up a tree. But I don't need to figure everything out now. I really don't. What I need to do, like I said, is just take photographs and video, maybe write some notes down, and then revisit this in the dead of winter and just see, what do you think you need? It's good to take pictures and photos year round. Video if you can. And this will help you now. It also helps you remind you how great a job you did, right? I want you to remember that too, because yeah, we had failures, like my Veronica over there. It wasn't great this year at all. The Blue Star Junipers, eh, not good. But you know what? There's always going to be little surprises too. Like the beautiful little knockout rose <laughs> that may stay or may go, don't know. Until next time, happy gardening.